Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So do you guys think the Bitcoin rally is going to continue? Well, apparently this Bank of America strategist does. This one from Michael Branch here on Twitter. Bitcoin's impressive 2023 rally is predicted to continue. And this coming from Bank of America strategists Alkesh Shah and Andrew Moss. The forecast is based on the recent flow of funds between crypto exchanges and personal digital wallets. So what they are looking at here, guys, is money moving from crypto exchanges to wallets specifically, wallets of the individual purchasers of the investors in the week leading up to April 4th. Fourth, a net total of $368 million in Bitcoin was transferred to personal wallets, making this the year's second largest net Bitcoin outflow from crypto exchanges. So um, 2023, guys, obviously has been very, very warm to cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin has been leading the pack. And Sean Moss believed that this trend suggests a decrease in sell pressure as investors typically move tokens from exchange wallets to personal wallets when they plan to hold them for the long term. Now, the long term, in quotes, that is a subjective label, I believe. The long term could mean a year, could mean two years, it could mean 10 years. Uh, I think in this case, these people are realizing, okay, you know, this is going to be the last time I'm going to be able to purchase is Bitcoin at these low, low prices. Uh, because, you know, as we continue to move up, generally speaking, Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin will retrace a little bit, but will it retrace back to today's levels? Uh, you know, you got to think to yourself when we were moving up, let's just call this the bottom after this black swan event. Well, I mean, it technically wasn't. However, uh, a lot of people consider this the beginning of the crypto bull run. We just kept moving up and up and up and Bitcoin uh, was not relenting. And so, you know, we weren't seeing these types of large swings to the downside, boom, like this. We weren't seeing this kind of a thing. We were seeing, you know, here, let me just get rid of that. We were seeing more of um, what we usually see, which is just, you know, a huge pump up and then a bit of a retracement with a basing and then another pump up, another mini retracement before we started moving to the upside. And then it really started getting uh, very, very volatile here where, uh, you know, it was basically these retracements. You, you had to hop onto these retracements. And I think this is partially what caused a lot of this FOMO. Finally, when we got near the top, we did see deeper retracements occur. But you know how long this took? This was over the period of um, almost a year, okay? I mean, it basically took a year for us to get from that bottom, uh, you know, back in March of 2020 all the way to this point here. I mean, we topped out pretty much in April, so 13 months of a bull run uh, before we really started to question how long this was going to happen. So one year, 12 months, 13 months, give or take. And guys, we are only here. Uh, right now in the bull run. So we are already starting this pattern to the upside. And these Bank of America strategists are saying that uh, people, most investors at this point in time, are planning to hodl long term. I think long term could mean a year, two years. Bitcoin has experienced strong appreciation in recent months with a 70% increase in the past quarter and a 43% increase in the last month alone. So looks like Bank of America is bullish on Bitcoin. And just to give you guys some context, Bitcoin is trading at $30,000, give or take. We are, uh, you know, still hovering in this level right here. So we made our way out of this sludge, out of, out of this bottom part, the nastiest part of the bull market. I mean, albeit the best part to purchase more cryptocurrency to stack up over last summer, the fall, and now into the spring. And 2023 has been very, very beneficial for crypto. Let's bring up XRP real quickly here. XRP trading at about 50 cents. So uh, not much movement for XRP. It is uh, trending downwards a little bit today. Uh, this is XRP on the daily. However, uh, overall, I think what we are going to see is another move to the upside, considering this bullish pennant pattern uh, is now forming. And, uh, you know, we're going to see a lot of these bullish pennant patterns, I think, moving forward. Uh, I also happen to see this, guys. This is breaking news. Happened just yesterday. There are rumors that Justin Sun has been arrested in Hong Kong. Now, Justin Sun is the founder of the Tron token, TRX token. Uh, so what comes as a surprise to many, rumors on the rise that Tron founder Justin Sun has been handcuffed by law enforcement officers in Hong Kong. Uh, the details shared on Twitter are vague, at least at this moment. However, many have come forward to call it out as deliberate attempt to FUD the crypto project. So uh, a bit of a controversy here. We don't have um, any kind of solid uh, evidence that he has been arrested. However, this is the rumor, so I am putting that out there. This is not confirmed news yet. But also notice this. This comes after the CEO of Binance, Changpeng Zhao, said the same thing not long ago, that they were uh, actually going to delist the TRX token, uh, from my understanding. So, you know, the Tron token has actually taken a hit since we have been receiving this news, this is Tron on the hourly, and I don't know how many of you guys hold the TRX token. It was one of the top 10 uh, cryptocurrencies back in 2017, 2018 during that bull run. 
But now we've seen a huge drop for the TRX token and a little bit of recovery over the last few hours. But yesterday evening when this news broke, the Tron token took a plunge. But what about XRP trading? Are we going to see a continued move to the upside? Well, I think that's going to have to do with retail investors specifically and the confidence surrounding the XRP cryptocurrency. As pointed out by Keiko, it looks as though the lion's share of the XRP movement that we have been seeing over the last little while, over the last month or so, has been fueled by retail investors. The rally was driven mainly by retail investors while whales or entities with ample capital supply added to bearish pressure in the market. And I'll explain why. Uh, so Keiko, a Paris-based provider of data of crypto data, here's what he said. Uh, looking at buy and sell transactions on two of the largest Korean exchanges, Upbit and Bitthumb, market sell orders overwhelmingly outpace market buy orders. So he's looking at orders that are over 200,000 XRP or around $95,000. In contrast, the buy and sell ratio is much more balanced for smaller orders. So uh, it's looking as though the retail smaller orders were uh, what was driving the XRP price up. However, these bigger buyer orders at higher levels, so we'll say, I don't know, maybe 60 cents, 90 cents, depending on where those uh, resistance, uh, my guess is where those resistance levels are on the XRP chart. Uh, and so that would be for over 200,000 XRP tokens. Those ones are still sitting pretty up high there, but they are looking for bigger gains. And right now, considering the XRP price is still fairly low, still relatively low, uh, they have not hit their targets. So this is why we're seeing the price move up at this level, at least according to Keiko here. When looking at the tick level trading data, we can observe that whales are taking profits, which suggests the rally is retail driven. So I found that kind of interesting. I mean, uh, I'm not too surprised because I don't think, uh, you know, the big institutional money is really going to come into XRP until we see full clarity. Uh, you know, it just keeps reminding me of what Kevin O'Leary was saying several months back that, uh, you know, he's not going to touch cryptocurrencies that aren't fully compliant. I mean, he is a multimillionaire, owns a hedge fund. And so, I mean, he is all about regulation. He wants to make money in a regulatory environment so he does not go to jail. And uh, I mean, I get that, you know, when you're worth millions of dollars, you need to safeguard yourself. You can't be taking unneeded risk. Uh, you know, as they say, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. That cannot be you. So, um, you know, that's why these institutional guys, uh, they're waiting. And I mean, XRP, a prime example of that. And so I think, you know, a lot of the institutional money uh, is waiting on the sidelines. Retail will, in fact, pump the price up higher before, uh, you know, the big money gets in. But for these guys, they don't really care if it's, you know, if they buy at 35 cents or 60 cents or whatever. At the end of the day, they are looking for a safe investment. Yeah, ROI is definitely part of it, but a safe investment that, uh, you know, they can rely on. So just wait. I mean, I cannot wait for the institutions to come into this space because, guys, this is what's really going to get the price off the ground. Uh, I also happen to see this from DJ Peter Vass. Coinbase finally lists Flare tokens. So guys, if you are expecting your FLR tokens from Coinbase, they have finally given us announcement that users that custodied on Coinbase will in fact receive their Flare airdrops. Finally, Coinbase said it would start distributing the Flare airdrop to previous XRP holders on its platform as promised last December. Coinbase has finally listed the Flare token following months of persistent calls from the XRP army. The latest development has elicited further agitation for the exchange to relist XRP, of course. Uh, <laughs> in a tweet today, Coinbase said it would only support the Flare network. According to the tweet, the American exchange has already enabled deposits for the FLR uh, for FLR to its platform in regions where trading the asset is supported. So Coinbase has come out. They have said that they uh, are supporting Flare. They already have addresses set up uh, in some cases. And as for the airdrop, they stated this, the airdrop is expected to begin today. So when was this published? I think this was published yesterday. So um, maybe you guys already have uh, FLR tokens in your Coinbase account. Please do let me know if you guys are using Coinbase and if you are expecting a Flare airdrop for your account. And let me know if it's in there or not. Put it down in the comment section. You can also tag me on Twitter. I'm at WorkingMoneyCH on Twitter. So the airdrop is expected to begin today with withdrawals suspended during the process. Moreover, trading for FLR will begin once the exchange confirms enough liquidity. After the distribution of the confirmation of viable liquidity, Coinbase will announce the FLR USD trading launch. So uh, looks like this is a pleasant surprise, I suppose, for XRP holders who use Coinbase who are still waiting for their Flare airdrops. Uh, wanted to keep moving, guys, because James K. Filan has come out with a new update with regard to the Ripple SEC lawsuit. And, uh, you know, a lot of us were hoping this was going to be the big one. Unfortunately, uh, it is another letter, a supplemental letter filed by the SEC. 
And so here's what it states. SEC files a letter of supplemental authority in further support of its motion for summary judgment. And the letter is here uh, in the description of the video. If you guys are interested in reading it, I will uh, touch on this briefly, but I will link this in the description. So the plaintiff, the SEC, respectfully submits this notice of supplemental authority in further support of its pending motion for summary judgment. And they want the court to issue an opinion granting uh, the SEC motion for summary judgment and denying the defendant's cross motion for summary judgment. In common well, it says down here, the court found that defendant violated negligence based provisions of the Investment Advisors Act of 1940 relating to its failures to disclose certain conflicts of interest. In doing so, the court rejected a due process affirmation defense, alleging that the SEC failed to provide the defendant with a fair notice for their uh, for the disclosure obligations asserted in the complaint. So this is what the uh, SEC uh, has now filed. Okay. They filed this just yesterday, April the 11th, 2023. And so some in the XRP community are wondering, what does this mean? Does this mean that the case is going to be delayed even further? I mean, it feels like, uh, you know, throughout this process, we have had so many delays already. Uh, well, Bill Morgan here, uh, kind of explaining, extrapolating on this latest update. Thanks, James. He posts short and to the point letter from the SEC. This relates to a fair notice defense, which the SEC wants decided against Ripple on its summary judgment motion. The defendant in this case, like Ripple, tried to rely on Upton versus the SEC. So these are the details with regard to this letter in a fair notice defense, but lost. The court found a 50 year old case that gave the defendants fair notice as it argues the Howey case and its progeny since then gave Ripple fair notice. The case superficially at least helps the SEC. Okay, so is this good or bad? It is not a binding decision, though, on Judge Torres, and Ripple will seek to distinguish the case. Different facts, etc. It's not that hard. Uh, in, uh, in no non-crypto case must the court deal with a new asset class as a fact of a misguidance to the market of a Hinman speech. So it sounds as though this uh, definitely will not affect the details, the, uh, the specifics of the case. Uh, Bill goes on to say, I predict Ripple will not lose the fair notice defense at summary judgment, but because of this decision. And Tippex down here saying, you know, this only applies if the Howey test is an adequate measure for cryptocurrencies though, right? And Bill responding, it is only relevant to the fair notice defense. If Ripple wins on the Howey test, not applying to Ripple's XRP sales, Ripple doesn't need to win on the fair notice defense. So giving us some more insight here on this particular aspect of the case, uh, you know, he was thanked by some of the XRP community and he also wanted to extend the tweet thread here. I wanted people to know this will not cause delay and is not a binding precedent on the judge. So guys, uh, you know, whereas before we were assuming that, you know, a lot of these uh, added materials that were added kind of later after the fact were going to cause more of a delay because the judge would have to process it and kind of add it into the, uh, you know, to her current decision-making process. This in fact will not cause delay. In the SEC versus Commonwealth Equity Services case, the district court judge distinguished Upton versus the SEC on which the defendant in that case relied and on which Ripple also relies uh, does not mean Judge Torres will necessarily distinguish Upton versus the SEC rather than apply and follow it on different facts in the SEC versus Ripple. It is worth noting that in this case on which the SEC relies the failure to disclose conflicts of interest, which has the subject of the complaint, had been an industry-wide standard of conduct for 50 years, quite different to the infancy of the crypto market and uncertainty. So, um, you know, we're kind of comparing apples to oranges here, of course, with the SEC and with, uh, you know, typical securities laws. Uh, that precedent has been set, but considering we're wading into new territory here, uh, Bill is stating that this is very, very different. Crypto markets are very different, quite different to the infancy of the crypto market and uncertainty about whether uh, and to what extent securities laws do apply. And, uh, you know, probably why we need a brand new test, namely the Ripple test. Uh, but we are not there yet. So I wanted to thank Bill just for letting us know about that. And Mikkel here, does this add any delay to the ruling? So more people confirming here that it does not actually add delay. Sherry down here saying, nope, just consider it a suggestion for the judge. But TC.XRP saying, yes, undoubtedly. What other reason would the SEC do this other than for having submitted anything in the case? Utterly disappointing. Uh, Eddie saying no, Crypto Maxi here saying it is very possible the judge will give Ripple the opportunity to file a response, I suppose, unless her mind is already made up in Ripple's favor and the filing has zero impact. So, I mean, it is just more supplemental uh, material for the judge to consider, but unlikely going to, I mean, and that's the other thing too, right? The judge probably already has her mind made up, at least to some degree, I would assume, uh, just because it has been so long now and, uh, you know, there's already been all this evidence that has been introduced to the case. So a supplemental piece of information here, Mr. Hubert also mentioning this fun fact 
if something is filed every two weeks that delays the verdict by three weeks, then this case will indeed take forever and go down in American legal history as the only forever open case. So you got to take it from that perspective, too. Um, you know, the cases like this happen all the time and things like this get filed all the time. And, uh, you know, at some point, the case has to end. I know it doesn't feel like that for some of us, but uh, you know what, guys, at some point, the case does have to end. We hopefully will see XRP clarity out of this case. He goes on to say down here, it's just another 16 pages for her to read and consider. Uh, 2030 down here saying justice delayed is justice denied. Shoop down here saying for the SEC being the plaintiff, they have stalled way more than Ripple has and added to their lack of moral or legal actions have shown weakness from the beginning, in my opinion. Uh, Joanne down here saying, keeping Ripple in purgatory as Brad described it before. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, Brad Garlinghouse has also come out and been very, very critical of the SEC uh, for obvious reasons. But no, I do not think this will be the longest case in U.S. history. Uh, but fun fact down here, Salt here on Twitter posting this, only 53 more years and we can claim a new record. What is the longest case in U.S. history lasting for more than 50 years? Uh, the Myra Clark Gaines litigation is known as the longest case in U.S. history, beginning around 1834 and culminating in a ruling in her favor and against the city of New Orleans in 1889. So 50 years. Um, I'm not going to be waiting that long. However, I do not think I think there's a slim possibility for us to be waiting another 50 years or so. Boy, that would bring us to the year 2073. And I will be very, very old. So guys, this is just more supplemental information added by a floundering SEC. An SEC who thinks they still have a chance. Um, and maybe they don't, actually. Maybe they know the writing is on the wall. Maybe they realize they did mess this one up. So how is the judge going to rule? I mean, still favorable in many of the XRP community lawyers' opinions. And a favorable verdict will mean the launch of the number one cryptocurrency on planet Earth. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.